Hello world, this is Craig. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between 7-bit addresses on I2C and 10-bit addresses on I2C. Obviously with 7-bit addresses there is a limited number of addresses available and for large systems they simply need to have the additional address space available with a 10-bit address. And if you understand 7-bit addressing 10-bit addressing isn't any more complicated, it's just that the addressing requires two transfers of data to get to select a single device. So while it's not typically observed in systems that only have 7-bit addresses, there's, there's 16 reserved addresses that should not be used in 7-bit devices. And, and any address that begins with 0000 or 1111 are reserved. So there's those are the 16 addresses that are reserved for uh, other things. In systems that have a combination of 7 and 10 bit devices, then this must be strictly observed. And we'll see in a second here why we have to observe that. First, let's look at the first portion of a transfer when we have a 10 bit addressing. And we can see that this is our start condition. Originally, we have our clock and our data lines high, the data line goes low, the clock goes low, indicating that this is a start condition. So we know that the next seven bits that are transferred are going to be part of the address. But with 10-bit addressing, the first five bits are special. They have to be 11110. The next two bits are the two most significant bits of the target device's address. So in this case, they're one and one. So the first byte has to follow all the standard I square C address requirements, where the least significant bit of that byte is the read write bit, just as it is in a seven bit address. And the final bit, the ninth bit is the opportunity for any device that matched that address and decoded that address and is able to respond to that address, pulls the data line low showing that it's acknowledging that address. Now, this is where it becomes interesting because any number of devices may be responding to this first byte of this address because remember, there's only actually two bits of the seven bits that were just put on the bus, only two of them are the actual address. And those are the two most significant bits of the address. So a large number of the 10 bit address devices may be responding to that. And so, you know, three, four, five, who, how, however many of devices are collectively pulling that data line low saying they all acknowledge they're all ready to receive the next byte and process it. But because it's 10 bit addressing, the next byte is actually the low eight bits of the address. So if we look at that next byte, in this case, we can see that we're clocking in a zero, one, zero, one, 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 one. And so we're just clocking in uh, the remaining eight bits of that address. Now, the very last uh, clock strobe then is the acknowledge. And so at this point, only one of all of the devices that are doing the 10-bit addressing should have clocked in the first byte and identified that the, the two most significant bits match its address. And now it's clocked in the low eight bits of the address. And it's now pulling the acknowledge low to indicate that all 10 bits have matched its address. So now you can see why it's important that if you have a combination of seven and 10 bit devices in a system that the address beginning with 11110 must be reserved because if it's a seven bit device and if its least two bits happen to match the most significant bits of the 10 bit address, then that device would believe that it was the targeted device. And so what would happen is it would then read the second byte of the address transfer, believing that that was a data byte. And you can see that that could lead to problems because 
If it were to accept that second data byte, it would then pull the acknowledge low and the master would think that it correctly addressed the 10-bit device and the 10-bit device is then ready for the next uh, transfer. Possibly the 10-bit device is also pulling the data line low for that acknowledge, but there's no way to tell for sure. So it's very important that when you have a combination of 7-bit and 10-bit devices on the same bus, you need to make sure that they all follow the addressing scheme and that 7-bit devices reserve any address that begins with 11110. So that's all there is for the 10-bit devices. Once you've done the first address byte that has the reserved as the first five bits, followed by the two most significant bits of the device address, and then that is followed by the eight bits of the least significant portion of the address, then the transfers from then on uh, occur normally. So that's it. I hope you got something out of the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.